All right, so we're checking our 3500 and it's coming back 3415, which is horrible. So we need to take this thing apart, maybe put some new bearings in it, maybe shim it, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, so we pulled the three screws out here, and this pulls the back off. They're very tiny, don't lose them. We're pretty grimy in there, I don't know if you can see that. Pretty dirty and grimy. And then you can push your rotor out. That's pretty dirty and grimy. So you can see how dirty it is in there. Super dirty. So I'm sure that's a big part of it. So you can see this is the MWX uh, motor maintenance kit. It comes with the plate to hold all your uh, your stuff as you're working. You can put your rotor in here and your bearings in here and your case. Oh. Your case plus your uh, back plate and all that good stuff. But more importantly, it comes with this little press tool. And a little press tool is used to push the bearings out. So it's easiest if you've got a vise. We don't have a vise here. But you can basically take the press tool, put it on top of the motor case, and then you're just going to have to press down real hard. But you can press down on it and it pops the bearing right out. So it's super, super easy. Um, with a little force and then same thing goes here You can basically just put it down there and then just press real hard Or you can use pliers, you know, if you've got some pliers, but basically just make sure your motor back plate sitting in there nice and flush And you can just push it out Okay You will have to use some force because they are in there very very stiff But like that and the bearing popped out okay still in there a little bit but now you can basically push it get it out with your hand I can't do it with one hand but just remember your bearings the smaller diameter bearing goes in the, the case cap the larger diameter bearing goes in your, your your case. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and use some uh, brake parts cleaner to spray out the motor and clean it all up. We're going to go ahead and put the bearings, uh, the Marcus Williams bearings, in MWX bearings. We we'll use his oil. He's got bearing oil, some of the best bearing oil you can get. And uh, we'll see if we can get a better KV out of it. We are also going to try to shim this, and you shim it towards the back plate. So you want to move the rotor towards the back plate. Basically, inward, pushing it this way. And that should also help. So we're going to get a little tiny shim. You can see there's already one on here, but we're going to go ahead and add one, and that should also help. So if you've got a censored motor, you can pull the sensor off. Just be real careful. That way you can press the bearing back in. Um, to get the bearing back into the housing or the case, you can put the bearing onto the rotor and use the rotor to kind of push it in there. Just be careful not to you know, push too hard if something doesn't seem straight. If your bearing is not straight into, uh, doesn't sit straight basically, you're not seated, you're gonna go in sideways, it's gonna be real hard to push in. So you wanna make sure you're super straight um, when you try to press that together. So this bearing goes in pretty easy. It's easier going in than coming out for sure. We just kind of pushed it in, didn't even have to push very hard. Got this one back on with our sensored uh, board. And then everything just goes back together real nice. Should be nice and tight there. And uh, everything should move smooth. Put your screws back in, let's go KV test it. So after some back and forth, we ended up just realizing that there was 
hard, no, there was so much play in there. And so we've got this large spacer in there basically to push it all the way towards the sensor board side and has very little back and forth play. Um, so that's good. And then, yeah, that should help it a lot. We're gonna go ahead and let's go run it. I need to put a shim in here, right? All right, look yeah. at that. 35, 12. No, on that one, I didn't remove the From like 34 or something. Much, much better. It's a little bit extra work. So pretty awesome. We literally got over 100 kV out of it just by making sure that we were shimmed in space properly, adding the bearings, cleaning it out. I mean, that's a big difference. Huge. So just to explain a little bit, basically, even though the motors are 3,500, doesn't necessarily mean there's 3,500 kV. We've seen them all, you know, all the way down to 34, which is what this was, from 34 up to 36, 37, you know? And so uh, when they tech the motor, you basically have to be below a certain number. And I, uh, 3,700, I believe, is what we're doing here. Corey, it's 3,700 is the max, right? Or is it, yeah, 3,700. Um, I think the 2500s, is the 2500 allowed to be 28? Okay, so 2500 is allowed to be 2800, but the 37, 35 is only allowed to be 37. So we're at 35, 12, um, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people when they're testing their motors straight out the box are usually at 35, sometimes a little below. So um, you have to do some work to get them above that. Uh, it would have been nice to have. We, we bought a second motor and it was basically the same, 35. Um, but this one, going from 34, 12, basically, 34, 10, to 35, 14, 15, basically 100 kV. Pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, hope that helped you uh, get a little bit of info on how to rebuild these guys. Check out the Marcus Williams MWX. MWX, there you go, MWX. One of these ways, I can't tell. Anyway, check it out. Like, subscribe, share.